Good morning, class. Today we will study the chapters on geography of class nine, natural vegetation and wildlife. This is a very boring chapter of geography. Not much conceptual. First, we will study what do we mean by the term natural vegetation. So, the term natural vegetation it refers to a plant community which has grown naturally without human aid, without human aid, and has been left undisturbed by humans for a long time. So we have two concepts when we study the definition of natural vegetation that which has grown naturally and second it refers to which has been left undisturbed by human beings for a long time So the definition completes as a plant community which has grown naturally without human aid and has been left undisturbed by humans for a long time is referred to as natural vegetation so the plants which we have in our home garden or city park cannot be grouped under natural vegetation as they have been developed by conscious human effort they have not been grown naturally the species which owes its origin within the country and which are not which have not been introduced from outside are termed as the virgin vegetation this is another concept virgin itself means pure we are studying what is a virgin vegetation the literal meaning of virgin means pure so virgin vegetation the species which owes its origin within the country and which have not been introduced from outside are termed as the virgin vegetation in this reference india is one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries of the world this is very commendable that india it occupies its position among the 12 mega biodiversity countries of the world so india is one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries of the world it has 47000 plant species and occupies 10th place in the world and 4th in asia in plant diversity diversity here refers to the various species yeah we are not referring it to quality or quantity but the variety in the species of both flora and fauna fauna refers to the animal life and flora refers to the plant life so india it has about 47000 plant species and occupies 10th place in the world india occupies 10th place in the world and 4th in asia in plant diversity now the question which is generally asked in ninth class is what is the reason for huge diversity in flora and fauna kingdom so it is basically because of the following reasons first first let us write down the question reason for the diversity reason for huge diversity in flora and fauna flora and fauna kingdom of any place flora refers to the plant life and fauna refers to the animal life so we will study this broadly under two features or two factors first is the relief and second is the climate in relief we have the further subheading one is the land and second is the soil the both land and soil they are related but we'll study it under different heads under climate we will study it as under temperature second is the photo period and third is the precipitation study of relief features of any place it is known as a topography so first we will study how the relief affects the distribution of flora and fauna at a particular place so first we study it under the relief factors and under relief we first study the land we all know that more fertile land is used for agriculture the nature of land influences the type of vegetation the fertile land it is generally devoted to agriculture agriculture is possible only by conscious human activities so the undulating and rough rough terrain areas 
are the areas where grassland and woodlands develop and give shelter to a variety of wildlife. Because the rough areas, it is very difficult to develop it into fertile agricultural land. Though land reclamation projects are going on in various countries, but generally we study that rough terrains are the areas where grassland and woodlands develop and give shelter to a variety of wildlife. Second factor we study is the soil. We know that different soil provide different bases or the different soil provide bases for different type of vegetation. Under soil, we will study what are the various types of soil as per the fertility or the moisture holding capacity of the soil. For example, the sandy soils of desert which are not very fertile and which lack moisture and hence support the xerophytic type of vegetation. Xerophytic type of vegetation or the desert type of vegetation. For example, the cactus and the thorny bushes. In the soil, we can study for example the sandy soils of desert. They support the xerophytic type of vegetation. This you might have studied in biology. We we'll later on study what are the adaptations in xerophytic type of plants to survive the harsh climatic conditions. And examples of zero are cactus, thorny bushes, soils of marshy area and specifically the soils of the delta region they support the mangrove trees. For example the Sundarban delta. We have studied how the Ganga and the Brahmaput river or the sediments brought by the Ganga Brahmaput river, they contribute to the formation of the Sundarban Delta. Prominent feature of the Sundarban Delta is the Sundri tree and the natural home of Royal Bengal Tiger. So we have studied that the soil of marshy areas, they support the mangrove trees. At high altitudes where the hill slopes, they do not have the very great amount of the soil or they have just a little depth of the soil. They have the conical trees. So this is what we study that various types of soil support a different type of vegetation. Now we come to the another subheading that is the climate. In this subheading we have, I have already said that we study three factors affecting the type of vegetation. First is temperature, second is the photo period and third is the precipitation. So first we will study the temperature. Hot and humid climate always supports the luxurious vegetation. This is very clear. You have seen in your daily life example also that for example in India in the monsoon season or prior to monsoon that is in June when there is a hot and humid climate you might have seen the luxurious vegetation around you. Though the monsoon failure it leads to the failure of crops and dryness of vegetation. But when there is abundant amount of moisture and abundant amount of heat, we have a good amount of a good growth of trees. In the Himalayan slopes and the hills of peninsula, as there is a fall in temperature with altitude or as one goes from sea level to the top of the mountain, one can see the transformation of vegetation from tropical to subtropical temperate and further to the alpine vegetation. In context with other countries, places near the poles, which are extremely low temperature, have coniferous and tundra type of vegetation. For example, in the Siberian region, you can see we have the coniferous forest. So we can write that hot and humid climate supports luxurious vegetation. In case of India, as there is a decrease in temperature with altitude, one can see the transformation of vegetation from tropical to subtropical temperate and further to alpine vegetation. Second factor which we study in this context is the photo period. Photo period it is also and we can say that the amount of sunlight received or as insulation. 
Location of a place in accordance with latitude, altitude along with the season determines the amount of sunlight or the insulation received by any place. Trees have favorable growth when they receive ample amount of sunlight. Otherwise, the trees have stunted growth. In your home gardens also you might see that if you compare the growth of two similar plants, one place in such a way that it receives ample amount of sunlight, then it grows faster. And if you place a second, pl second plant away from sunlight, it will have a retarded growth. Third factor which we are studying it is precipitation. Now it has many forms or we can say that precipitation has many forms ranging from rainfall to snowfall. Areas of heavy rainfall have more dense vegetation as compared to other areas of less rainfall. You can compare the northeastern states of India with Rajasthan. Rajasthan west to Arabis, it receives lesser amount or very less amount of rainfall as compared to the northeast region around Meghalaya, Assam. As such in northeastern states you can see the dense vegetation and in western part of Rajasthan you have the xerophytic type of vegetation. Now we will study a general topic what is the importance of forest. We are generally asking 5 marks questions or a short essay on what is the importance of forest. What is a general topic? But students should write such answers in point forms to score good marks. So first we can say that as an endowment of nature, they are the renewable resources which help in enhancing the quality of environment. So we can write they are the renewable resources and as such they help in enhancing the quality of environment. They provide us a pollution free environment. Second factor related to this is that the forests are rain holder and a rain banker. Without them the valleys and most of the areas lying around would be an arid waste. So we can say that the forests they are rain holder and a rain banker. Third point is the forest they aid in checking soil erosion and they help in reducing the wind damages. The trees act like a million tiny dams and forests perform the duties of a barrage. Third point is they help in checking soil erosion and reduce the wind damages. This is generally done by the canopy of the trees and the roots. Both we can say that forests they have an ethical value. Trees are objects of beauty, they provide fine scenery and excellent healthy air and thereby attract people as a source of recreation. You can write that forests they have an ethical value, they are objects of beauty and they provide fine scenery and excellent healthy air and thereby attract people as a source of recreation. Fifth, we can say that the culture in specifically in reference to India, the culture of India gathered strength in the Tapovan all over the country where the sages lived and men of all affairs spent their retired life. Tapovan, it is an Hindi word, forest. Other uses being the forest, they modify the local climate, Ro root of the trees, they hold the, hold the soil and thus help in controlling soil erosion. Other uses, the forest products provide raw material for industry, so they help in setting up of industries which act as a boon for the country in other implied ways also. They provide, we can write that they provide raw material for industries. Seven, we can say that it provides humus to the soil and thereby increases the soil fertility. In short, we can write it increases the soil fertility by adding humus. We can also say that forests are the home for rich and varied Wildlife, specifically to India, we can say that forest, Indian forests, they are very rich in medicinal herbs and drugs like atropa, belladonna, nux formica, kinkona. Indian forests, they are rich in medicinal herbs and drugs.
एग्जाम्पल ए ट्रोपा बेलाडोना नक्स वॉमिका यू कैन एड ऑन एग्जाम्पल्स ऑन योर ओन ऑल्सो लैक इट इज सिक्रीटेड बाय अ टाइप ऑफ इंसेक्ट विच फीड ऑन सैक्स ऑफ होस ट्रीज लाइक पलाश पीपल कुसुम वूलर एंड बैनियन सच ट्रीज आर एक्सट्रीमली फाउंड इन साउथ वेस्ट डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ बिहार झारखंड छत्तीसगढ़ एक्सेट्रा This is specifically for the Indian trees that lack. It is secreted by type of insects which feed on the sap. Host trees like palash, peepal, kusum, bular, and banyan. Such trees are extremely found in southwest district of Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh. Tenduli they are found in Odisha, southeast Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Chhattisgarh. They are used for. They are used as wrappers for beads. These are some specific examples. You can also say state that forests they provide shelter to over thirty-five million tribesmen, which is an important cultural aspect for any country. These are the general uses of forests. You can add on more uses for it. For your convenience, but answers to such topics should be written in point form to score good marks. 